So I installed Bazite a couple of months ago on my RG Ally X, so I can now dual boot Steam OS and also Windows. Here are the 11 things I love about this. Six issues are ran into, including a Wi-Fi issue in SteamOS, and also one big issue that almost made me have to wipe SteamOS entirely. The three things that make this feel like a Steam Deck Pro, and finally, whether I recommend that you should give this a go or not. So let's start at the beginning of my Bazite journey with all the positives. And at one is just how easy it was to upgrade the SSD of the Ally X. Now hear me out that we do not have to upgrade our SSD to install Bazite, it is purely optional. And we can do this on the included one terabyte SSD. But I really do highly recommend going for a larger two terabyte or especially this crucial P3 plus four terabyte one if you can stretch your budget. As when we split our SSD for dual booting, so half will be for Windows and also half for SteamOS, then this will give us tons of space to store all of our games. And I'll be really honest that I was pretty terrified of upgrading my SSD as I am generally like the worst at DIY. I suck so bad at this. But honestly, it really was so much easier than I thought. We just need to set aside an hour or two. Splitting the ally case with the plectrum was a little bit fiddly, as was disconnecting the battery. But as I say, it really did turn out to be easier than I thought. And I cover every easy step in my Bazite setup guide, link in description. At 2 is that the setup and installation process for dual booting Bazite with Windows was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Again, I was super apprehensive going into this, and maybe you're like me that you're just holding off trying this because setting it up seems daunting, but honestly it really was so much easier than I anticipated. It just takes quite a bit of time with stuff like the cloud recovery, so we do need to set aside an afternoon or an evening to do this. The only unnerving part for me was when we have to type in universal blue all in lowercase together and we can't see what we're typing for some reason. But other than that, it was completely fine. And again, I go through every single step slowly and carefully in my Bazite setup guide, so we really don't need to worry about anything. So when we're fully set up, at three is that I love how we still get every single one of our Steam OS updates exactly like we would on a Steam Deck, so that we're always up to date. At four is one of the biggest reasons I wanted to install Steam OS using Bazite, and it's this incredible console-like game library launcher. No more credit to Asus in that they've massively improved Army Crate in the summer's 1.5 update, so we have this carousel feel and we can customize it to a small degree, like cover art size and background image blurring. However, when we install an amazing app on SteamOS called Decade Loader, we can install game-changing plugins that totally enhances our gaming experience. A plugin called CSS Loader completely transforms the whole appearance of SteamOS. My favorite theme is called Art Hero, and the level of customization is just unreal. If you're a little OCD like me and love things exactly a certain way, then this is definitely worth installing SteamOS using Bazites just for this. To add to this is another amazing decky loader plugin called Steam Grid DB. So when we press the start button on a game, then change artwork, we can then swap out the artwork easily directly from here, which is so neat. On the subject of decky loader plugins, at five is one called Bluetooth that makes connecting to our Bluetooth headphones like my AirPods Pro here just so, so easy with just one tap, unlike messing about in settings like we do in Windows. I'll highlight just one more awesome Deckie Loader plugin, and this is called Vibrant Deck. And no joke, this genuinely makes our Ally X feel like it's got an OLED screen, especially when we set it to the 200 max value like I do. If we head into settings, then display, then adjust display colors, Valve have now made it possible for us to add this OLED light capability directly here too. And I really do hope that Asus add this vibrant functionality on the window side for us, along with Decky Loader type plugins, and I've covered the seven essential Decky Loader plugins in this vid, link in description. At seven, and games that really benefit from the OLED light display are our Switch games. And what really surprised me is that our Switch games play so much smoother on SteamOS compared to Windows, which makes them much more enjoyable. And this is because on SteamOS, shaders are loaded beforehand as the game launches, which is why it's so smooth during gameplay, whereas on Windows, they're loaded during the game, which can often result in stutters. I've done an ultimate Switch setup guide for SteamOS 2, link in description. Talking about emulation, the eighth thing that pleasantly surprised me is that Emudeck, which is such an awesome way to play all of our retro games, also feels better and more refined on SteamOS than on Windows. And let's not forget that Emmy Deck started and was made for SteamOS and the Steam Deck and then got ported over to Windows, which explains why the superior version does seem to be on SteamOS. 
at nine is that if we triple press the army crate button then a new menu called handheld daemon pops up man who decides on these random names with lots of extra features and options and i'm going to cover this in a dedicated bazite tip and tricks guide soon so make sure that you're subscribed as you don't want to miss this I'll highlight just two awesome features here. If you go to the update section, then we can make sure we're on the very latest version of Bazite, which is super important. And two is that if we head to the TDP section and tick this change TDP with view and Y option, then when we hold down the top left option button, then we can toggle the TDP every time we press Y. So red is 13 watts silent mode, purple is 17 watts performance mode, blue is 25 watts turbo mode, and white is manual mode. And I really hope Aces can bring this quick TDP shortcut switch in to Windows, cause this is so ace. We're in our final two now, and at 10, which was another key reason why I installed Bazaar, is yes, true console like sleep and wake functionality. It's just so good in the middle of a game like here at my favorite restaurant Nando's to just hit the power button and then just resume hours or even days later in mid game it's just incredible and finally at 11 I was surprised at just how easy it is to switch between Steam OS and Windows as in Steam OS we just press the command center button then power and then restart then hold down the low volume button in the BIOS we press the command center button then select the Windows Boot Manager option and voila, we're now in Windows. And it's even easier to switch back to Steam OS in Windows as we simply hit restart and bang, we're now in our console like Steam OS. And now let's look at the six aspects of Bazite I've discovered that haven't been too great an experience, including one that nearly made me have to reset my whole ally. So the first negative aspect of Bazaar I discovered is that when we press power and then select to switch to desktop, my brain kept thinking to use trackpads to navigate the desktop, which um, yeah, the Ally obviously does not have due to the muscle memory of owning an actual Steam Deck OLED. What makes matters worse is that while most apps like the Chrome browser make the virtual keyboard pop up, it doesn't pop up in some apps, like my favorite web browser Brave. Even pressing the command center button, which acts as a kind of Steam button, and X does not bring the virtual keyboard up, making it impossible to use Brave as a web browser. So therefore I had to purchase this awesome foldable Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad by Zedo. Link to purchase it in description. And thankfully this does make navigating the Linux desktop much easier. The second issue I ran into was that a great app called Greenlight, I've done a full setup guide link below, that helps us to remote play our Xbox console and cloud stream Xbox Game Pass games doesn't work with Bazite, as when we load it up it just keeps trying to connect. A paid Xbox remote play and cloud gaming app called XB Play does work, but yet we run into the virtual keyboard not popping up issue I just mentioned, and I'll mention the importance of Game Pass in my overall thoughts in just a moment. At 3 is that the battery when in sleep does drain pretty quickly, as here at 1.30am the battery was at 97% and the following day just over 12 hours later at 2pm it had dropped by a sizable 7%. If you've installed Bazite and have noticed quite a bit of a battery drain during sleep like me then do let us know in the comments. Bazite issue 4 and this is a big one is that you'll probably find like me and our great viewer Tim R that there is a Wi-Fi issue in SteamOS in that the Wi-Fi often disconnects or even worse that we cannot even connect to a network as none show up. To fix this we need to restart and head into Windows, search for control panel and head into here, then into hardware and sound, then power options, click on this blue right and it says change settings that are currently unavailable. We need to disable this turn on fast startup option as this will disable a Windows feature called Fastboot which locks the Wi-Fi card solely to Windows, hence why it can't be used in Steam OS. And after doing this we head back into Steam OS, our Wi-Fi will be fully working from now on and we can now connect to any Wi-Fi from our list in settings, yes. Issue 5 is that when we press the power button to sleep while in Windows and we leave it for a few hours then it doesn't boot back into Windows but annoyingly into SteamOS instead. Now I know how to fix this that we need to press search in Windows then type CMD which should bring up the command prompt. Hold down on this then select run as administrator then click yes on the pop up and here we type powercfg.exe space hibernate space off but this doesn't seem to work for me if you know a working solution to disable hibernation on the ally then please do let us all know in the comments 
And finally, and by far the biggest issue I've had with Bazite, when the proverbial brown stuff all hit the fan, or in this following clip, this lady, Tumbling has been really bloated today was when SteamOS failed to launch and I got stuck in this Bazite menu. I thought I was going to have to completely wipe my SSD until I talked about it in this vid and as usual it was you great viewers who came to the rescue like Abdul Bassett, Mike's Tech Tips and Gary Mari who all recommended turning off Secure Boot. So in the BIOS and the Security tab we head to Secure Boot, change this to Disable, Save and Exit and phew I've not had any issues with this since thankfully. So the big question is, should you go ahead and install Bazite to get dual boot Steam OS and Windows? Well, I mentioned in a recent vid that there are some gamers who just don't see any benefit whatsoever in installing third-party shizzle like Bazite, and do you know what? That is totally fine and valid. However, if you're on the fence about installing Bazite, then I say go for it. The pros I've outlined in this vid far outweigh the negative, and for me, it fixes three of the biggest complaints I have against the Steam Deck. In that number one we have Steam OS with this nice and crisp 1080p display on the Ally instead of the lower 800p found on the deck. The second is that we have the power of the Ally and Ally X which is what the deck is severely lacking. For example it's mind blowing to me that the brand new Indiana Jones game runs superb on the Ally. And finally at three is that with a touch of the button in this dual boot setup we have all of the benefits of Windows like being able to play Game Pass and anti-cheat games too like Black Ops 6 which all added up to Bazite on the Ally into a Steam Deck Pro. And I'm so happy about this I feel like singing just like this lovely lady. Oh my god. Oh my um be sure to like and get subscribed if you found this helpful. If you've installed dual boots Bazite, then let us know your thoughts and tips below in the comments. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. You don't always need a plan, sometimes you just need to breathe. Trust, let go, and see what happens. If you're going through a really tough time, then yes, just breathe. You've got this. Remember your situation is only temporary and you will get through this. So stay encouraged today, guys. And if you're ready to take the plunge and install in Dual Boots Bazites, then click this vid right now. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.